Hi guys, now the last time I did a Bronco Sport video, I did some pretty simple mods. I did a bug deflector, rain guards on the windows, some mud flaps, and the all-weather mats, and all this stuff came from the Ford um, catalog, if you will. Now, I did add some extra beefier Toyo Open Country ATs because I thought I'd just rounded out the look a little more, but I have seen some lifted Broncos on the Facebook pages, so I decided, you know what, it's time for me to lift my Bronco. Now, I say Bronco loosely. I know you guys are going to say it's a sport, not a big Bronco, and I get that. But let's cut to the chase. I went ahead and got the RTR billet lift kit. So it's pretty much like a spacer kit because these Broncos are kind of like cars. So here's a billet aluminum front spacer for the front, and you get the rear ones. And no worry about knowing how to install it because they actually send you a QR code that you can scan for the installation instructions. Jordan Wheeler's got a great install video on RTR's actual YouTube. And then I thought this was pretty cool. It says delivered unto the universe by Ryan. So shout out to Ryan RTR. I got my build and lift kit. So let's get right to it. All right guys, I'm not gonna lie to you, it's been only 15 minutes and I've already got the front passenger uh, shock strut spring assembly completely out. These cars are so easy to work on. It's not even funny. And I did it with hand tools. I did bring my impacts out. But really when a car is new, nothing's really too difficult to take out. So first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and put some studs up in the front of this. And I will, uh, actually before that, let me show you everything you gotta do uh, the fast way. All right guys, the first thing you wanna do is open the hood on your Bronco so you can access to this cowl. Now you wanna remove the plastic clips that are holding the cowl in place, which are right here, 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 all the way down. Once you do that, you can lift up the cowl and you're gonna to wanna to remove a 10 mil bolt that goes here and then one underneath in the back. And basically it removes a cover that exposes the top hat so you can remove those three bolts. All right, let's talk about the actual assembly here. So you've got some sensors, which are right here. You just remove those sensors. There's one tree for that clips into the side right there. Go ahead and remove that. Then you wanna remove your sway bar end link. So I removed both sides at the same time. So there was no binding issues because the sway bar does move. Uh, then you've got these bolts right here holding this assembly and then one eight mil bolt holding your brake line in place. Now that's really important because you don't want to take that with you. And then bam, the whole thing comes out. Easy. So let's go ahead and I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough on how to install these studs into the front shock assembly. And then we'll throw all of that together and the front will be done. And it'll be probably about 30, 45 minutes, but I'm moving pretty quick. Hey guys, so here's the assembly. What you're going to do is go ahead and get the bag of the six studs. Now the studs are different because they have a long end and a short end. So what you're gonna do is take the supplied thread locker and apply it to the short end and then thread it into the top hat, just like that. So now that that's done, you wanna go ahead and get the upper spacer like this. And the way you line it up is there's one extra hole on one of the mounts. That hole is gonna correlate with the hole right here on the top. So it only goes on one way. And there you have it guys, so easy, it's almost criminal. Um, another thing to note is I'm pretty sure that the RTR, nope, I was wrong. I thought it stuck out where these bottom mounts go, but the logo, but nope, I was wrong. It's a little offset, not a big deal, but that's basically how it goes. Now the only thing left to do is put it in the car. guys the front is done um something i didn't tell you guys i actually got a set of wheel spacers from check out my crocs from titan titan wheel spacers i think i got an inch and a half uh it's very subtle if you look at it from the top you can see the tire kind of poking out really trying to mimic kind of the same fitment that i have on the jeep a little more aggressive on the jeep but you guys get what i was getting at so she is it's kind of hard to tell on camera but she's kind of carolina squatting because i haven't done the back yet I should have completely measured the difference and I didn't. So I really can't tell you the difference. I can tell you what the box says, which is about uh, 1.3, 1.4 inches. Um, 
I think once it settles, actually there's nothing to settle. There's no springs, it's just a spacer. So pretty much this is where it's all gonna, it's all gonna live. And again, that quarter inch, inch and a half, gives her a nice little fitment. Let's check it out from the side. Nothing too crazy. It's not so wide that it's sticking out like uh, the Jeep is right there. Uh, but yeah, it does look a little more aggressive than just the flush back. Fired. And I know the back is a little more complicated, nothing too crazy. If you do like I'm doing it, you do need two jacks, which I went and commandeered my dad's jack. Um, he's not home, so he doesn't know. I should get it back before he gets back. Where's this damn jack at? Damn it, Brian. Thank you, he took the son of a bitch. All right, guys, got the rear suspension torn apart. Really, I just put some pressure up right underneath here with the jack. Removed this bolt, then removed the lower shock bolt. Removed the two upper shock bolts and then I slowly lowered the jack so this arm could come down. You can remove the shock which is right there and with the pry bar you just get a little leverage just like that and this will come down. Actually this is really easy to push down and you can remove the spring. The next step is to remove that lower spring isolator which is this one right here and you take the RTR billet spacer Drop it right down in there, and then you gotta drill one little hole and put in an alignment dowel. So before you drill, you wanna use a Sharpie to make sure these stay aligned after you drill your holes so you can make sure your center punch goes in. You are drilling a hole through the aluminum part of the Bronco and then through the aluminum spacer. And you're gonna use a 1 8 drill bit. So let's get that done. All right, you can see the little dowels in place where it needs to go. Next thing you need to just go ahead and get the spacer, the bottom spacer, and it's got one screw. I used a little red Loctite on it because it's going to go into this alignment hole right there next to it. So let me see if I can just go ahead and place this thing in just like that. Bam. Now all the stuff to do is put the spring back in and that'll give us that lip on the bottom. And then we need to extend the shock right here excuse me, right here, there's two billet spacers that go there with two longer supplied bolts and the rear lift is done. Man, before I forget, you do have to put that lower <laughs> isolator uh, back on. If not, that's gonna be one clanky ride. Um, so it's got a nipple that slips right into a hole, uh, right into the bottom spacer. So it should sit flush and tight just like that. And then when you put the spring back on, this top one should be painted from factory depending on how old or new your Bronco is. You just line that up with the spring just like that so it's entirely too easy so now let's wrap this up all right that's <laughs> that took way longer than i originally anticipated uh, i ran into a little issue with the spacers that i told you guys about that would have gone i had said they went to the top of the rear shock mount here i was completely wrong i had to watch the rtr video uh they actually went up here on this uh front lower uh control arm or trailing arm if you will and my spacers were uh, the wrong size. So I called Jordan up at RTR and um, he's like, yeah, I'll pass up the information. Um, you know, they even offered to give me a partial refund and I told him, don't even worry about it. Um, I'm also not going to wait for you guys to send me the spacers. I just wanted you guys to know in the future. So basically they're going to go ahead and change that. Uh, so I just went ahead because I have the proper tools, put the spacers into a vise, and then I slowly drilled them out until they fit um the provided 18 mil bolts and you need to use those bolts because they're actually longer so you have a good bite up into the body and frame of the bronco sport so to me not a big deal um and as you guys saw i did this all in my garage with hand tools i should have definitely worn gloves my hands are all dirty um but not a big deal uh the bronco looks pretty cool um it's so big yet it's so little so i'm going to go ahead and wash my hands take this thing outside so we can take a better look at it see Bronco Sport looks a little taller a little meaner it's got that wider like bulldog stance going on right now so I dig it it's not too aggressive you can actually buy even wider wheel spacers now the reason why I use the spacers was because I originally want to get a wider wheel with a fatter tire essentially but I didn't know how wide I could go this kind of gives me an idea of how wide I'm gonna go with it but I'm not gonna make any of those changes I'm pretty happy where it sits right now um because it is my daily commuter if you do this you definitely need a wheel alignment i can see 
excess uh, negative camber uh, in the front and a little bit in the rear, it seems like. I can't tell because when I was looking at it, it was uh, when I had just set it down. Now that I've driven it around, uh, it might have settled a little bit. So other thing to note is uh, stock wheels. I get this question a lot. Stock wheels, Toyo Open Country ATs, and the size is 245, 65 on a 17 inch wheel. Now when it was on stock height, it didn't rub at all. And now that I've got the lift kit and the spacers on, because when you get a spacer on a wheel and you space the wheel out, the turning actually changes. Instead of going like this, it actually rotates on a bigger radius. Um, so far, I haven't experienced any rubbing and that's been on smooth road just here around the neighborhood. I don't know how that'll affect like a speed bump or highway driving just yet. And I'll be sure to report on that um, once I start driving it for the next week. But other than that, simple kits to install. I did it all with hand tools. These cars, uh, these Bronco Sports are super easy to work on. Um, and yeah, you can see behind me, still got the Challenger, still got the Jeep, Drift Mustang. I got that at a different location, but that'll be a majority of the next content. The 1980 Ram Charger is making great progress. We got the engine and transmission in that. The lift kit is all set up, so that stuff is all going. Um, I will tell you guys right now, this is the, the dad mobile, but I wanna go ahead and get a vehicle that is larger than this and what i really want to get i want to stick to the ford family for a few reasons i want the largest suv that ford ever made and that is the ford excursion we had one growing up but we had the 5.4 triton v8 i want a 7.3 or a 6.0 ford excursion limited or eddie bauer with a two-tone paint job but right now this is the this is the dad mobile. It looks pretty good. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for today. I spent most of the day out here in the garage. Um, the reason why I wanted to knock out the, where you at, buddy? Bronco Sport today was because I got so many parts piling up that I was like, dude, I just need to start getting rid of these boxes of parts because I got this problem where for like the last year, especially for the Mustang, I've just been stacking parts. So when I do uh, modify the car, um, I'm not taking stuff on, putting stuff on, or doing things twice, essentially. So uh, next thing is gonna be BC coilovers, all the suspension for the drift car. Um, and that's gonna be a pretty in length, uh, in depth and lengthy video because I've done a ton of research. I've reached out to BC Racing. I've reached out to RTR vehicles. I've spoken to a lot of people to make sure that when this car goes out, it's stout and it's ready to drift and it's not gonna give me any problems. There's a lot of style or driving style that goes into it. Um, I learned that a lot from racing the Challenger. I have my own driving style, so the stuff I was recommended, I can tweak from, but it's gonna be a great starting point. I plan on giving you guys all the information. Uh, that way you don't have to do any of the guesswork. So, all right guys, that's gonna wrap it up. Until next time, peace out. Yeah.